allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, at this time I would like to ask Lisa Collins, <coughs> Tim Menninger, and student representative Colin Trivett, is I, did I say that correct? Yes. Wonderful. To come forward, we'll come around the front side of the desk here to take the school board oath of office. Okay, then at this call, Christina, if you do um, the roll call, please. Sure. Kate Mayer? Here. Tim Mettinger? Here. Lisa Collins? Here. Gary Dunlap? Here. Joe Giddens? Here. Cheryl Hancock? Here. Anita Jagosinski? Here. And Colin Trivet? Here. Okay, with seven of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Approval of the agenda. I note that the school board agenda, meeting agenda, has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With that in mind, are there any changes to the agenda? Seeing none, I would just note that there is an amended minutes, copy of the minutes amended in your folder, and those would be the minutes we would be approving this evening. So seeing no other changes, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Board organizational meeting. The first official action of this evening is to appoint a temporary chair to conduct the Board of Officers elections. I would entertain a motion to appoint a temporary chair for the Board Officer election. Um, I would make a motion to appoint Cheryl Hancock as temporary chair. Is there a second? Second. Are there any other nominations for the temporary chair? Any other nominations for the temporary chair? Any other nominations for the temporary chair? Seeing none, hearing none, I would entertain a motion to close nominations and unanimously elect Cheryl Hancock for the temporary chair. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. And any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay. Election of board officers. <clears throat> president, are there any other, are there any nominations for the office of president? Um, I would like to nominate Cheryl Hancock for the office of president. I'll second. Are there any other nominations for the office of president? Are there any other nominations for the office of president? And the third time, any other nominations for the office of president? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to close the nominations and cast unanimous ballot for Cheryl Hancock for the office of president. I so move. 
and the second. Second. Discussion, seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Vice President, are there any nominations for the office of Vice President? I nominate Anita. Are, is there a second? Second. Are there any other nominations for the office of Vice President? Any other nominations for the office of Vice President? Any other nominations for the office of Vice President? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to close nominations and cast a unanimous ballot for Anita Jagosinski for the position of Vice President. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, <coughs> all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Clerk. Are there any nominations for the office of clerk? Uh, I will nominate Kate Mayer as uh, clerk. Is there a second? I'll second that. Are there any other nominations for clerk? Any other nominations for clerk? Any other nominations for clerk? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to close nominations and cast a unanimous ballot for Kate Mayer as clerk. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Treasurer, are there any nominations for the office of treasurer? I'll nominate Gary. Is there a second? A second. Are there any other nominations for treasurer? Any other nominations for treasurer? Any other nominations for treasurer? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to close nominations and cast a unanimous ballot for Gary Dunlap for treasurer. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Gary, you didn't vote nay. I was thinking of it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you to all the 2012-2013 school board members, and um, at this time, and officers at this time, I think the positions, people are in the correct position. So we will move on to other official duties. And for the audience, this is our organizational meeting, and so we really take care of these um, designation of things. So the first one is the official newspaper. Dr. Carlson. Oh, official depositories. I'm sorry. Thank you. Mr. Austin. <coughs> yeah, I'm here tonight to present the designation of the official investment and checking depositories. Um, unfortunately, at this point in time, um, we have bid this service out. Um, as promised, I, I presented this information back um, to the board, uh, the bid process itself um, earlier this spring. Um, we are currently reviewing those bids at, at this point in time. There's five institutions that have submitted bids for both checking and investment services. Um, those bids are currently being reviewed at this point in time. Um, due to the, the changing in checking and investment services, um, the scope and offering of the services provided um, we're really looking at some pretty neat services going forward with um, both checking and investment services. So I'm really doing my due diligence to look at the RFPs, going through them line by line, page by page, to make sure that the recommendations put forward in these bids are going to meet our specifications, provide the service we need, um, provide a location um, that is convenient for us, and provide a, a cost uh, effective service as well. So at this point in time, unfortunately, I don't have that recommendation, but I have one of two options. We could defer the action to designate the official checking and investment depositories until the bidding is complete, and we are tentatively planning on action on May 13th. Or option two would be to approve the current investment depositories, which may require then for me to come back to you um, if 
another depository is uh, a recommended um, other than our, our current depositories as you see listed. Um, the current investment depositories and checking depositories are Associated Bank, the State of Wisconsin Local Government Investment Pool, Park Bank, and Associated Trust Company. So those are our current providers. Um, depending on the bids and, and where they finish out at, we may need to make a change or we may not. It depends. But So option one would be defer action tentatively till May 13th. Option two would be to approve the current investment depositories knowing that we may make a change and come back to you in May. And as Mr. Austin is saying, number one, this is the order in which, so we would be recommending number one to the board, option one. Correct. So what is the pleasure of the board? To defer action? Yeah, to wait. Or to come back? <clears throat> so is that a motion, Gary? Yes, it is. So Gary's moved. Um, to defer action to May 13th. Is that the correct date? Is there a second? A second. Any discussion on this? So is, if I could just ask. Sure, so this please. year, is it more involved? You, you kind of alluded to that, that there may be more. Yeah, I asked each and every um, bidder to be as creative as they possibly can, both on the checking services, um, deposit services, investment services, and what I got were some pretty creative um, options. Um, more electronic deposit services, actually depositing um, checks within buildings potentially, um, basically ACHing those checks or, or electronically depositing them and ACHing them into our check. Um, remotely from each building um, was one option. Um, investment in um, sweep accounts overnight funds was another option that was discussed and presented. So some, some interesting ways to um, improve the way we do business, reduce costs and so on and so forth, and then hopefully provide a little bit better investment return on the dollars that we do have available. And um, So it's, it's been interesting to see the variety of proposals that have come in. Um, it's not just the standard checking account. Here it is, um, the standard fees anymore. Um, banks are really being aggressive right now, and um, there's a wide variety of fees and um, various interest earned on the accounts as well. So it's it's been interesting to to say the least on the options that are provided. Good. That sounds like we're looking at things proactively, though. So I think that's a good thing. It's to do. it's extremely promising. I'm I'm excited, and that's why I'm going through it uh, very detailed. Um, just to, to make sure that I cover all the bases on it. And, and in fact, I'm probably going to be interviewing uh, more thoroughly the, the firms, too, and, and calling some of them in to just fully understand exactly how they're going to provide that service to the district, too. Okay, thank you. So a motion has been made and seconded to defer action on the investment and checking depositories until May 13th. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Now, designation. Is, oh. If the record could show that I abstained Abstate, from yes. taking any action and or participating in that discussion. Yes. Thank you, Tim. <coughs> so now, designation of the official newspaper. You have an issue paper that is recommending our continue, continuation, um, identifying the Courier Life for Alaska Holman as our designated newspaper. And be happy to take any questions, but that would be the recommendation. So I would entertain a motion to approve designation, designating the Onalaska Holman Courier Life as the official newspaper for the district. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Next item is uh, Wisconsin Interscholastic Athletic Association membership. It is a recommendation that we continue our affiliation and membership with the WIAA. And again, if you have questions, I'd uh, be happy to answer. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> recommend moving this forward. So I would entertain a motion to uh, continue with the WIAA membership for the dist school district of Holman activities. I so move. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. So failure to do so would make us ineligible for post 
um, conference competition. So unless there are any major concerns. Um, no, I, I struggle with this one every year because I would like to see the WIAA maybe fall under the Department of Public Instruction or have some because they are completely independent and answer to no one, but we do not have any other recourse if we yeah. want our students to participate in <laughs> right. this, so we're kind of in a, in a spot. I understand that, so it's reluctant we have to do this, but I would like to see them maybe not be quite so, you know, independent. You know, we could actually put forward a Wisconsin Association School Board. I, I had thought about that. Yeah, that, that just might be a, I mean, if there's that. some interest in pursuing that, so. Um, okay, a motion has been made and seconded to continue on the WIAA membership for the School District of Holman activities. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Wisconsin Association of School Board membership. This would be a recommendation to continue membership with WASB. And again, unless you have questions, uh, be recommending moving this forward. Maybe. Um, just for the new member, could you just um, <coughs> summarize, and I know Lisa, you've already attended a WASB <coughs> conference, but summarize some of the things that we utilize their services for in the past? Yeah, we get uh, a number of publications. Uh, this is, again, the primary asso professional association for Board of Education throughout the state of Wisconsin. So mm -hmm. they, they do provide a great deal of information um, to the board um, directly. There are additional services. We, even at our level, we um, make several contacts uh, with, whether it's the staff at WASB asking questions, um, some advice uh, or guidance, and um, very helpful at many times uh, for us, um, which typically are questions surrounding board, the function of the board, and, and so on. It's, it's hard to, again, there's a number of things I know that um, uh, annually, and you'll be dealing with this next as far as the delegation, as far as the it's annual nice. school board convention. But really it's the voice um, for the board uh, in many ways at the state and even at the national level. And that you have uh, someone that is looking out for at the state level your interest uh, collectively, uh, board of educations throughout the state. And it's just one avenue that you can utilize, and they're there to serve you through your membership. So. so with that in mind, I would entertain a motion to approve the district's 2013-14 WASB membership. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. As Dr. Carlson indicated then, since we have retained our membership, we do need a representative who would represent <clears throat> the district at the January annual meeting. Um, and I guess a lot of times we just see if anyone is interested or willing to do that. Kate, you're shaking your head kind of yes. Yeah, I, I am, unless somebody else wants to be. I mean, I would go and not be the rep too. It doesn't matter. I, I loved it last year. So. <laughs> Anyone else? Who was our current rep? Was it Kate? Kate? Kate. Oh. She did a good job. Yeah. She did a great job. <laughs> I, I don't know if I, as a new person I can go to that and be a rep. I know that some districts have, and I'm not sure how that works, but I am interested. In okay. Well, you can go. Um, all board members, actually, we've kind of encouraged all board members to go as a team um, to the um, event it's the representative would go in and as they vote for resolutions mm -hmm. on what they're going to take to the state legislature and promote um, that representative would vote, vote on behalf of our school district so every school district in the state gets the opportunity to vote on those okay. things so you want to be considered yes I'd like to be okay so and Kate you are you want to be considered? We would do nominations, correct? Oh, you know, I could just go. Okay. I think if Lisa wants to be, Lisa wants to be real, that was a very good experience for me because it gave me more things to read and I had, I reported back to the board, so it's, it's a good initial involvement for you, but um, for sure I will go, but I think that, that would be great. I would defer to Ms. Collins. Oh, well, okay, great. Yes. So then I would entertain a motion 
um, for the Wisconsin Association of School Board Representative. I'll so move. For Lisa Collins. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay, Lisa, <coughs> congratulations. The next one is designation of CESA 4 representative. It's held once a year. Um, this year it is scheduled for June 5th, 2013 at 7 o'clock. It is held at West Salem at their headquarters. And again, it is their formal business meeting um, is what you would attend. And oftentimes it's the election of the CESA board members and hearing the annual report of the CESA um, organization. So is there anyone who might be interested in doing that? Um, I'd be interested in that. Okay. I have a lot more free time than a lot of <laughs> people that work during the day, so my sure. nights are even more free too. Is there anyone else who might be interested? Well, then I would entertain a motion to appoint Kate Mayer as our CESA 4 representative. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of appointing Kate Mayer as CESA 4 representative, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes. Designation of board meeting times and dates. In your packet, um, you receive the 2013-2014 board meeting calendar. Um, our board meeting policy, I think, is more neutral into what the dates are. Our specific practice has been the second and fourth Monday of the month, with some exceptions for the December 23rd potential meeting and the um, May meeting for Memorial. And we've actually, in the calendar, it already is designated as that Tuesday following Memorial Day. So I would entertain a motion to approve the school board meeting times and dates as presented. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Phew. Well, that's pretty <laughs> much that. <laughs> Recognition and thank you, Dr. Carlson. Well, if I could ask uh, Ms. Hancock to go around, I'm going to give you a few things. And if I could ask Brianna Schwabenbauer to come on up. And we're going to recognize Brianna for her year of service. Uh, representing, uh, serving as our student board representative uh, during this this school year, and uh, appreciation and um, acknowledgement of your work, Brianna. There's a certificate on behalf of the board of education, as well as a small token of their appreciation as well for you. So congratulations and thank you again. Well, thank you all for having me. There's a wireless mic, Brianna, where you can go. I wanted to say thank you to the Holman School Board of Education. And going back um, to, I moved here in third grade from a different school district. And I remember when I first moved here, I didn't know how to add and all of my classmates knew how to add. And so I was behind everybody in math. And through some brilliant <coughs> teachers, I was able, I eventually learned how to add. And <laughs> <laughs> that's what my experience through um, the Holman School District has been. I've, uh, I've had so many opportunities introduced to me and I've got the chance to work with so many amazing people and this has been one of those great learning experiences um, where I technically learned how to add or I learned how to become a better person and I've grown as a person, um, as a woman and as an individual and I've, this experience has really helped me to find a definite path in my life and I have made great connections with some great people and I know I have a great support here in Holman and I wish Cullen the best he is going to be an awesome student representative <laughs> um, 
I had a some good conversations with him earlier about the position and um, he's all excited and he has a lot of energy so I'm looking forward to seeing um, what where this year takes you and I hope it is just as wonderful as an experience as it has been for me so thank you again for all of your support all of your guidance and everything that you have taught me Brianna, you were unable to be with us. I didn't prepare you for this question, oh. but you weren't able to be with us at the prior board meeting, which we would have recognized you. Would you be willing to just share a little bit what you were doing? Oh, definitely. Um, I went down to Madison for a state senate scholar program, and I was there for a week. I met with different groups of people, lobbyists, uh, reporters, senators, um, trying to think of other interest groups that we met with and I also I was played the role of a senator for a week where I um, created legislation about um, well the question that was given was should we lower the tattoo age and so <laughs> we, as a group we had to come what we had to debate it out and we eventually came to a vote and it, it was a it was a good experience I learned a lot about our government a lot of good things and a lot of things where you want to pull out your hair and you go oh my dear lord <laughs> but um, a lot of good things and um, I met some great people Senator Jennifer Schilling um, Steve Doyle I mean that we're just so blessed in this community to have great representatives and great people representing us and it's it gives you faith for the future to see people like them um, doing what they're doing and working for people like us well again thank you Brianna for your time and your service thank you and good luck best wishes thank you. I'm going to go ahead and continue. We have uh, some additional recognitions that I'm going to work my way through. We have um, some employee special recognitions that come up this <coughs> time of year annually. And if you allow me just to walk through some of these quickly. First of all, our volunteers. National Volunteer Week. Uh, we greatly appreciate the efforts of, uh, and if you keep uh, count ongoing, we've had well over 3,000 volunteers over the years, and roughly oh, anywhere in three to 400 new each year. Uh, their assistance is crucial to our programs, and they assist us in a great variety of ways. The individual schools in the districts have been holding special recognition programs um, during the month of April and to thank and acknowledge and I know there's some more this week the many contributions made by our volunteers so again the district is very grateful of all their efforts I'd like to thank uh, those in our district our principals and others that really assist and make it make it possible for our volunteers to come in as well so on the consent agenda this evening the board will be asked to take action on formally recognizing our volunteers National Teacher Appreciation Week is coming up May 6th through 10th, the 10th. This week has been recognized at the national, state, and local level for many years. The district, again, is very grateful for the quality teaching staff that serve our students on a daily basis. The school board hereby rec will recognize through their action on the consent agenda uh, May 6th through 10th, 2013, as National Teacher Appreciation Week again joining many districts around the state and nation um, and you'll be doing that as part of the consent agenda also we recognize national school nurses week may 6th through 12th uh, this is a week to celebrate the nursing profession and the specialty of school nursing the district joins the national association of school nurses in recognizing the contributions that our school nurses make every day to improve the health and success of our nation's children and including right here in Holman. Um, during this week of celebration as with our other groups and our other employees please take time to recognize and celebrate and honor the good work of our nurses throughout the school district and uh, again as part of our consent agenda the board will be asked to take action on formally recognizing our nurses. 
So some uh, great celebrations that we look at annually at this time of year. In addition, we have received some donations recently uh, from Jerome and Kathleen Nelson. Uh, Mr. Nelson is a U.S. Air Force veteran and I had communicated earlier that we um, had the uh, wonderful opportunity to present Mr. Nelson um, the high school, Holman High School Diploma. Thank you to Mr. Baer and also Mr. Gittens was available and I know that was a special time for uh, two veterans to share and reflect. So thank you. Um, uh, not necessarily related to that, but also the Nelsons have made a $500, don $500 donation to the high school's Acts of Random Kindness program, which that is a program that Mr. Bear works um, with his staff to work with families and students that, depending on um, uh, their need, um, he can um, use that account to help as appropriate. So we thank the Nelsons for their generous donation. Also, Gunderson Lutheran uh, continues to step forward to help our school district. Uh, they recently donated 60 computers and monitors. Um, and as noted here, I think we're well over, or not over, but <coughs> close, around 1,000 or so computers um, from that uh, as far as helping school districts, not only ours, but through the tri-state area. So thank you to Gunderson Lutheran. And finally, uh, Ms. Liz Shank uh, recently donated a Dell laptop to the activities office, and I believe that's specifically being used, utilized with our track and cross country programs. So um, again, in overall, thank you so much for those who have donated. And uh, I think that that is it for now, okay. unless you have questions. Thank you very much. I would just say, Cullen, you have big shoes to fill. Brianna was a wonderful representative. She challenged us. She was outspoken at some times. And as she grew, so did we grow. And we really appreciate um, the fact that you brought the student perspective to us. Students are why we're here. And so you were a delight to work with. And I know Cullen will do just as fine a job. So thank you, Brianna, and best wishes to you. And then, as Dr. Carlson said, we are blessed as a district with the number of volunteers that we have that continue to make a difference in the district and the benefactors who help us um, to be the excellent school district that we are. So thank you for all you do for us and, and supporting our efforts. Then I would move on to public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Anyone? Okay, then we will move on to reports and discussion. Educator effectiveness update. Dale and Wendy. Thank you, and Wendy is, uh, Ms. Savasky is in the audience. Um, tonight, we're just gonna keep this very brief. We have been communicating for a couple months here on updates regarding educator effectiveness. And again, educator effectiveness is what all the schools, all the school districts in the state of Wisconsin will be transitioning to uh, with the start of the 14-15 school year. It's really gonna be our primary way to look at how we can better support, best support our teachers and our principals uh, through their professional growth and uh, evaluation. The update tonight, we don't have a big presentation. A lot has been going on. I wanted to share publicly, which I've already shared with the board and we have shared with staff, thanks to the good work of not only Wendy's leadership, but those who serve on our <coughs> educator um, assessment committee. Um, they've been doing a lot of work um, building their own knowledge and we have communicated that the model that we will be moving to is the Department of Public Instruction model. And most uh, or many of you know that there have been two, there are two primary models. Uh, one from Department of Public Instruction and also one that ha is being developed, has been developed by CESA 6. And so uh, through the strong recommendation of our stakeholder group, um, in my own observations, uh, we will be moving forward with that model. When it comes to 
with the board, you already have a board policy on directing us to make sure we have a, a model in place that uh, we are effectively evaluating staff and so on. And also, there is acknowledgement in that through your employee handbook as well. So um, I, again, I want to thank uh, those that are involved um, in, in that recommendation. We have a lot of things coming up, though. Again, full implementation by 1415, and there's a lot of work that needs to take place. So some of the things that are coming up, um, towards the end of May, we have a, a group of representatives that will be going to a three-day training um, with the Department of Public Instruction as far as learning more about, truly about implementing that model and being trained. These people, I'm, I'm included in that, will be going and will this will be the core group that is part of a pilot next year. And uh, we have um, teacher representatives as well as principal representatives, Ms. Savasky, myself. We, I think it's a small group of about seven or eight of us. And um, we will be going and experiencing that. So we continue with our learning um, as a group and then we will be broadening that um, throughout the district for our staff and this will be something that you will continue to see updates and more information as we continue on this journey this is a good thing and it, it's uh, it's a lot it, it's going to take a lot of work a lot of commitment um, but this is a this is a real positive and um, so I'm looking forward to it and um, and to move this forward and so with that, uh, be happy to take questions you have. This is a real brief update, and, uh, but Wendy's here as well, and we will keep people um, informed. But I know our committee is meeting, I think, uh, tomorrow again. And so we're, we're not only continuing learning, but looking at steps in communication uh, with, with staff and how are we going to move this forward? So with that, questions? Any questions? Of course, there is a cost that goes with this. At this point in time, it continues to be included in the budget? Well, the actual fee per, I guess, license or per person, there's a lot of other costs that we know are going to be uh, eaten by the district. Um, not provided but right now the estimated cost for that fee is about eighty dollars per person and uh, that is what continues to be in the governor's uh, proposed budget but we do know there's a lot of training in servicing we're gonna have to work on that I think just to keep you abreast that that uh, those uncovered costs right. would be affecting us of course the costs hopefully they'll stay but we've seen more uh, unfunded mandates come down in the past so hopefully that won't happen this time then the next item is within school district choice update Julie I don't believe Ms. Crack we don't have something in the board packet I think we'll just she might caption some of the main ideas that she's going to share uh, with us Good evening. I'm here to give you a little update on within district school choice. I know that you have received some updates in the past couple of weeks, um, but I wanted to give you a more current update tonight. We have a total number of requests this year of 19. Of those 19 requests, for within district choice, 17 of them have been approved and two of them have been denied. The guidelines used in the decision making process as per policy number 432 reflect requests in which the child is already attending the requested school are approved. These requests are the results of families who may be moving out of the boundary area and would like their children to continue to attend the school they have been attending. Requests in which a child has a sibling attending the requested school are approved. When the two guidelines that I just mentioned do not apply, 
there are additional factors considered in making a decision to approve or deny. Through the request process, parents are asked to give a description of the educational benefit to the child if the request is approved. When they describe better teachers or a better school, that's not a good reason for moving children. If there's an educational benefit to approving the request, then it is determined whether or not there's space available in the requested school. If there's no apparent ben educational benefit to approving the request, <coughs> and the request is for convenience only, the request is denied. Individual extenuating circumstances may need to be considered when making a decision to approve or deny. The within district school choice process continues to be challenging. Administration continues to receive concerns that non-resident requests appear to take priority over resident requests. Staff members who wish to have their child or children attend the school in which they work are being denied because it is viewed as convenient for the staff member. Denying these requests has been very difficult. Some staff have shared with me that there should be an exception when considering approval or denial for their request, as having their child in the building where they work can have an overall benefit on their child's well-being and educational performance. Tonight I ask the board, if, it, if you have an interest in considering such an exception for employees. If I could just add, we wanted to keep you abreast. We have done that in written communication through your weekly status report and so on as well. But we thought it was in, would be important as we continue to live this process. And I thank Julie for really uh, her leadership with this. It is a difficult thing. We, we've, those of you that have uh, been uh, here for a while know uh, the challenges that we continue to experience. And so we, we thought, um, let's make you, again, give you an update, but also pose the question, uh, and I know through our SOC committee, that has been a vehicle of doing a lot of work uh, on this, and that, and that has been that long ago. So want to just keep you informed, and as a group, if you have thoughts or concerns as this may perhaps continue to evolve or change, we want you to make sure that you're communicating that to us or uh, Julie, myself, or through our, our committee chair, and so on. Tonight, uh, you know, a couple of the specific concerns that continue to be with us. If, they're, if you want to have uh, a discussion, this is not for action. Uh, we, did not, we don't have a recommendation, and it certainly can be fine with just leaving it as information for you. And if you have specific direction, we can come back um, with the more of a follow-up for you. So certainly, this is not for any action um, at all. Um, if anything, at the most, uh, some conversation or discussion. Discussion. I know that this is something we've struggled with a few times, and I think the goal was that eventually the school choice options, except for very specific purposes would be eliminated and the moving out of the the dis, the and it really is just affects elementary level so moving out of the elementary um, area and keeping them there was kind of the one exception and so then if their sibling came later those would be why the exceptions came but yeah it is as a district we really believe that every elementary school provides the same um, or exceptional, it may not be exactly the same, but an exceptional educational opportunity for our students no matter which elementary. So um, certainly if the SALT committee wants to consider it, that would be the appropriate place for the staff is a, another twist. And then what do you, you know, do you define as immediate family and is it um, si is it children or is it grandparents? And you know, we've had all of those kind of things too. So. Well, and, and is that fair to the public, to everybody else who 
pays taxes and they'd like <coughs> to have an exception made for their child to go to a specific school just because they don't happen to be an employee. I'm just throwing it out mm -hmm. there. I see both sides. I really do. That's my issue. <laughs> With so many things, I can always see both sides. I do understand that there probably is a benefit to a child going to a school that a parent maybe works in, but on the other hand, is that fair? There's always an exception. There, there could always be a reason why there's a benefit to a student going to a certain school, but boy, I would hate to be another parent who wanted my child to go to that school, but I don't happen to work in it. That would stick in my craw. <laughs> so I would have to really, really think about this. I think we would really have to discuss this, and I think that would be a huge can of worms to open. I think that's but, one of the comments that we get about the open enrolled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because there is a chance mm -hmm. that I've denied someone, but I might put an open enrolled right. student in yep. that exact spot. And we've and heard I, that many times. So. There's no easy answer. That's the thing. Other discussion? <clears throat> well, I would say then um, the newly formed SALT committee, if they want to take that up and further discuss it. Otherwise, I don't see a... It's difficult, it's very difficult, but I don't see an outpouring of interest to make changes at this point. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I guess if the board would be so, um, allow us to do that, um, we would like to move to 11.5, our community collaboration venture update um, we've got some community people here and um, it would be really great I know Dan McHugh recently had some surgery so um, that is on our agenda as an update I know that I was not able to go to the meeting this last week but Jay Clark did attend on behalf of the district so Jay if you have any updates information you'd like to share with the board <coughs> just a quick update of the activities um, we met on the 16th uh, two fantastic facilitators from Viterbo guided those in attendance through a variety of activities and it was just so positive and uplifting as a group. Just great positive energy. Um, the group, through the guidance of the facilitators, developed a, I guess I'd say a preliminary draft of a mission statement for the group to help guide the energy that we did have at the meeting. Um, we also identified some of the strengths supporting the community center, became aware of some weaknesses that we might need to attend to, identified opportunities, and finally identified some threats that might be between us and the success of the community center mission. Um, we were assigned homework. Uh, so that we came to the next meeting uh, ready to maintain the momentum. Um, we're to identify the program offerings and plans uh, that each of the collaborators might see uh, applying to the community center. And that next meeting is scheduled for April 30th. And I, I always, when I think of how uh, Laurie and Marilyn and Dan describe things, feel like I don't do a very good job, but, <laughs> so they may have things to add. Would any of you like to say anything about the meeting if you we don't do this very often but please feel free or I, I would just totally concur that um, <laughs> I would only concur with Jay the the energy was extremely positive the participation was um, very collegial and um, a lot of support to be able to say keep it going keep it going keep it going um, just a lot of, of of enthusiasm to be able to say whatever is in front of us is a challenge or a barrier let's find a way to work our way through it <laughs> okay well great and I received some information back from it and I would agree that that is the key I think as a board we've now had a presentation um, from the group a couple times and also as a professional fundraiser, I know how difficult it is to say, we're gonna build a community center someplace. And we are, uh, 
I guess in my mind, and I've had that conversation with Dr. Carlson, that it would be very helpful for us as a board, um, and we would work, of course, with the administration to come up with a resolution that gave them some, I guess, an even deeper commitment that if we, you know, the, the specific space we're looking at may not be the appropriate space for a variety of reasons, objections, things that they've identified, but that we will find a space. I think as Mary Lynn said, let's be proactive in this and let's find a space. I think we've got that kind of space um, at the high school site. And so we'll have some conversations and that is something that could potentially come to us as a board at the May 13th meeting. But think about that. Please share with Jay and myself and Mary Lynn and Dan and, and Lori any concerns you might have so they can answer those questions. But when I look at those uh, possible things that may be a negative, I really think that we can find solutions to them. So there is my um, PSA for the project tonight. And I'll, I will end there, but I do think that we will try to do that. Details obviously have to be worked out, and we understand that. That's why the, the resolution would have to be done in a way that that would happen. Um, the school district does not and cannot afford to put ourselves in a position where it is going to be a burden to the district and the taxpayers in five years if something happens. So we understand that. I think the committee, you see them shaking their head, they understand that too. It's pretty clear that we need to address those things. But until we have something more solid, it is very difficult to work with some of your major benefactors to say, oh yes, we're going to do it someplace and you know just maybe someplace on the high school site or on the school district land is enough that um, so there like I said that's my PSA so thank you folks for coming and all the time you've put it into that and we will get back to the rest of our agenda board member comments mm -hmm. board member comments reinforcement and committee reports and Cullen, this may be your first time to make some comments, so just listen, and I don't know if you watch Brianna, but we have you at the end, so you'll have an opportunity to listen. But what we do is call upon board members, and Lisa, we call upon board members to make any reports or comments of um, committee meetings that they may have attended, or if they see something exceptional in the district they'd like to highlight and compliment, um, it's a great opportunity. Or if you have a concern that you'd like to have addressed, it's a great opportunity. So having said that, I will call on Kate Mayer. Um, SaltNet, um, April 15th. We are close to the end of, of um, our duties for this year. Um, Shortly, you'll be seeing um, policy recommendations coming for youth options, high school credit for courses taken at middle school, um, and open enrollment. And so, I'm you know, listening to the conversation about open enrollment, and I assume that that'll be that'll be coming up also next year. And you know, unless we do end up revisiting it with Salk, um, our last scheduled meeting is May 20th. And we have three items left for that time, I think, or two, grading system, interscholastic sports. Um, so we're almost finished. Okay, it's been great. a pleasure. It's been a, been a very good committee. It's a very active. Thank you for your leadership, Katie. Yes, no problem. My pleasure. So, Mr. Menninger. Uh, just a few quick things. First off, I just certainly want to thank the residents of the district for allowing me the opportunity to serve them again as uh, member of the school board so thanks to all of those there buildings grounds committee was supposed to have met this evening uh, was postponed to next week due to some conflicts so we will not be meeting until next week uh, just some some great things coming up under the consent but really again the recognition piece around uh, the, all the people who help make this a special district our volunteers our teachers and the nurses and certainly thanks to them very well deserved uh, you know it's tough to limit that recognition to a week a year it should be every day as far as I'm concerned with that group but uh, certainly people who really make a difference for the school district uh, and then lastly just to publicly I want to express my condolences to Cheryl well, thank, you. Your mother, so. thank you mr. Dunlap well, first of all I'd like to thank all of the volunteers of, of the school district uh, they're very important to the success of the school district and we appreciate the support um, I'd like to I'd like to thank all the teachers for what they do and, and how they do it, and uh, we're very proud of our teaching staff at Holman. I'd like to welcome Lisa to the 
school board. I'd like to welcome Cullen to the school board. Welcome. Our next finance uh, committee meeting won't be until May 20th, so we've got a while to think about that. And I'm also asking everyone to think spring. I, I need to go to a baseball game with all the pair of mittens on, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. We wish you could go there, too. Thank you, Gary. Mr. Gittins. Yes. <clears throat> I, I wanted to, to mention something about the meeting with Mr. Uh, Nelson and his subsequent uh, diploma. And I think that a lot of people in this country are realizing that there are a lot of veterans out there who are <coughs> either have no, no, no graduation credit and are subsequently in no man's land. And they need, they need the support of everyone to get recognition of this. And Mr. Nelson mentioned that his neighbor was another man who did not have a uh, diploma and was therefore couldn't enter into an anywhere unless he, he got permission from someone. So uh, I just want to thank, thank him for coming forward and, 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 and taking a stand. And hopefully, there will be other veterans out there who will do the same thing. Thank you, Joan. Thank you for doing that. I know that they're the greatest generation. There are a number of people, and they uh, it was a great program to be able to provide them that diploma. Mm -hmm. So thank we you. We just got to get them started. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, Mrs. Jagosinski. Um, I wanted to congratulate um, Mr. Nelson. I thought that was every time I go on the district website, which is a couple times a day, that's the first picture I see, and it. It kind of chokes me up a little bit. I, I just think that's such a neat opportunity and, and what an honor for you to be able to be present and present him with that diploma. I just think that's... that's we, we've had coffee since then. Oh, yeah. that's just amazing. And then for him to donate back yeah. to our school district, it, that's that just blows me away. That's just really neat. Um, so I wanted to um, thank the volunteers and all the people that we recognized and thank tonight, um, but to thank him and his wife especially for donating back to our school district. Um, uh, let's see, I wanted to say we had our SALT committee meeting, which Kate already talked a little bit about. Um, Cheryl, I'm sure we'll touch on the personnel and governments committee uh, meeting that we had last week. Um, I wanted to also mention the um, teacher Appreciation Week and School Nurse Week, which in the school I work in is always like a double treat week because they always run like at the same time and the school's <laughs> all full of baked goods and food for like a whole week. Um, but actually, I shouldn't make light of it. it it's, a, it's a great time to celebrate all the school employees that we have that, um, that make, our, make our workplace so wonderful and keep our kids safe and band-aided up and educated and everything else so make sure you tell them that you appreciate them and um, how much they are um, treasured by our students and our staff and administration and uh, Brianna I wanted to thank you for all you brought to our board in the past year that you've been on um, I'm kind of sad to see you go and looking at you just see you're like a beam of light sitting out there and I keep trying not to look up at you and just keep hitting me in the eyes with your beaming smile and um, you're an amazing young woman and you are going to go some far you are going to go far 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 in your life um, I can't wait to watch you and see in 20 years where you are at because you are it's it's just like I, I just can't wait. You are going to have an amazing life. It's going to be just a pleasure to be able to say, I knew her 20 years ago, and we're like, look at her now. So thank you for all you um, gave to our board in the past year. And welcome, Colin. And I don't mean to, for you to be intimidated by <laughs> all the talk about Brianna tonight, because her shoes are big, but you can fill them. So um, welcome to the board. I'm, I'm glad you were brought on and the students must have a lot of faith in you and I can't wait to get to know you too the same way we got to know Brianna and Lisa welcome and I'm Lisa's my neighbor in case everyone doesn't know so I know her pretty well already and she's going to be a very very good board member I'll put a plug in for her so um, also last but not least first home track meet tomorrow night hopefully there's no snow and not a lot of rain and come to the concession stand because I have brownies cooling on my, on my counter at home so that's all I have I was gonna ask about the brownies so <laughs> good. Um, Lisa Collins. 
Um, well, I also want to say thank you to the volunteers. Um, I also want to say thank you to the volunteers in the district because um, giving your time and yourself to students and the school, um, I think, is a huge thing. And um, I don't know all, what all capacities are for the volunteers, but um, I'm, I'm really proud that we have so many people that want to be involved. And I'm excited to be here. Um, I think I was more nervous about today than like the whole election. It seems. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm really proud, and um, I've been getting to know folks here on the board, and I'm, I'm I have a lot to learn. So I'm hoping that I can have some um, help to do that. So I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And then Colin Trivet. Um, well. First meeting, uh, just getting a look around and see how everything's working. Um, if anything, I'd like to thank the students uh, from the school district for electing me and giving me this opportunity to uh, be on the board and see how everything works. Um, a couple just maybe some student recognitions. I'd like to recognize um, Holman High School DECA is heading to the uh, international conference leaving tomorrow, so exciting for that. And then, of course, the uh, home state track meet or the home track meet. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I just have, as Anita said, personnel and governance did meet. We are looking at policies. One is directly related to volunteers and looking at um, things that we have done as a district on background checks and those sorts of things. So if you have any thoughts on those, we have brought it before the board before, but we are looking at that update um, and continue to look at benchmarks um, for the, the human resources component of the district. Um, the only other thing, of course, Lisa and Cullen, welcome to the board, and please let us know, uh, let me know if I can be of any help, and Dr. Carlson and the rest of the board members I know are there to assist you as well. Um, and thank you for um, selecting me as president again. I appreciate that very much. Committees, I think it's mentioned, sometimes committees meet over the summer, sometimes they don't. It's really based on the amount of um, projects that they have to work on but if you have an interest in specific committees Christina if you could send them the committee descriptions especially for the new members and Cullen we do invite you to be on our committees the board committees as well so if there's one that you are interested in um, there are four basic committees it's personnel and governance um, finance committee buildings and grounds and student achievement and learning committee and for the most part our committees include community representatives so and that was something we talked about the personnel and governance um, also reaching out so if anyone has an interest in serving on a school board uh, committee let us know we're forming those um, as we speak and that's how I decided to run years and years and years ago I served on a committee and um, got to know a little bit about the district that way and I think a sense of pride the student learner goals that still exist in the district I was Darty Berg and I were board members on that committee that helped establish those and I, we've looked at them and really things haven't changed so they're good they're good goals and when you can leave that lasting um, impact on a district it really means a lot so thank you correspondence received you did get committee um, meeting reports, buildings and grounds, student achievement and learning, personnel and governance. Our school board meeting schedule, May 13th is our regular board meeting. The 25th is graduation at the La Crosse Center and that is what this is all about. Seeing those young people walk across that stage is just a very uplifting and fulfilling <coughs> thing to do. You, we need to let Christina and Dale know if you're going to attend. Um, the school board is, does sit on the stage and participates. Um, May 28th is our May regular May 2nd meeting it is a Tuesday keep that in mind there's a retirement reception on May 30th and June 5th is the CESA um, meeting June 10th and June 24th are regular board meetings and school board evaluation you received a copy of the school board evaluation in your folder this evening we aren't planning to discuss it this evening um, again the the personnel and governance committee though is looking for your impact or input on that if you feel it was too long I know I've heard some comments about well what do we do with this and so I think it's something that Anita and I will do because we're the personnel and governance it's the kind of the fitting committee 
maybe look at one or two in-service uh, meetings that we could bring to the district based on the results of the board um, evaluation and you know if you feel like it's sometimes the questions seem like they were asked in the beginning and the end if they're redundant you know, just let us know what you think about that um, I also said I don't know that we necessarily have to have the form in the policy I'm kind of a policy kind of uh, you know it doesn't make sense to me that the form is in the policy so we're gonna look at that too um, Robert's rules all of those kind of things so any any comments on the evaluation input seeing none then we'll move on to district administrators report dr. Carlson just a couple items I want to add uh, first of all those board members that took the oath tonight make sure that you sign if you haven't already and see mr. Clark we need before you leave we need to make sure that that is taken care of it would not be good if we went after midnight tonight um, without getting that taken care of so uh, so please do that in my report I do have listed as an item the personnel report so I just want to speak to that specifically on on two items on the personnel report that is included in your consent agenda this evening so I'm going to pick two items out and just talk a little bit about that first you will note the preliminary layoff notification for Amy Tessing. Uh, Ms. Tessing is a valued teacher in our 4K program. Due to staffing needs, it is necessary for administration to recommend to the board this evening to issue Ms. Tessing a preliminary notice of layoff. As it is a layoff recommendation, Ms. Tessing would retain rights to recall to the district in a position in which she is qualified our hope and intent is to minimize the amount of time she is actually on layoff. I'm optimistic at this time that she will be recalled um, as soon, but I must stop short of any guarantee. So tonight the board would be taking action on issuing a preliminary notice of layoff. Um, at the March 13th board meeting, or excuse me, the May 13th board meeting, the board will be taking action on issuing a final notice of layoff. These steps and timelines are regulated by state statute. I believe it's already, should be already obvious based on my comments that this action is not related to any performance because it is a layoff notification. Um, and so again, I just wanted to bring your attention to that, uh, that one item. Second, on the personnel re, uh, report, I'm pleased to recommend to you the name of Beth Hobbs to become the district's next transportation supervisor, replacing Roger Saxton, who is retiring at the end of this year. Ms. Hobbs currently serves as assistant transportation supervisor. I want to thank Mr. Clark for facilitating a very thoughtful and thorough process to ensure that we choose a person who will lead our transportation services with the highest level of integrity, trust, creativity, and forward thinking. Ms. Hobbs is highly respected throughout the school district. I want to thank Beth for her passion for serving our students and parents and for her high level of commitment and support to our employees, specifically in the transportation services. I believe Beth is here tonight, and if you wouldn't mind standing, Beth, and just so everybody can see you and know who you are. And again, uh, Beth is uh, my recommendation she, to you. She's on the uh, personnel report as part of the consent agenda, but I knew I had to make comments now because there's no other way I could highlight <laughs> and recognize her. So thank you, Beth. With that, that's all the uh, special comments I wanted to make, unless you have questions. Any questions of Dr. Carlson? Okay, then seeing none, we'll move on to consent agenda items. I would note that we have a number of item board meeting minutes, which it was the March, was it the 19th, I think, was the day mm -hmm. that was amended. Mm -hmm. It really just was some of the um, roll call and who made some motions. Um, so the you have a copy of the amended minutes there the personnel report the financial claims and account instructional services four-year kindergarten lease agreements which we discussed and had a report out at the last meeting 
pupil services, CESA 4 contracted services, which we report, had a report on at the last meeting as we did the field experience contracts, human resources, employee handbook revisions, and first readings of policies, administrative rules. And the Volunteer Appreciation Week, National Teacher Appreciation Week, and National School Nurses Week. So I would entertain a motion to approve the consent items unless someone would like to pull an item out and consider it separately. Okay, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items as presented? So moved. Quiet group, is there a second? <laughs> second? Second. Discussion. Okay, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda items as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries, and congratulations, Beth. Welcome. <laughs> I would then entertain a motion to go into executive session. Mrs. Mayor, if you would like to read that for us, please. We'll put you on the spot your first night on the... All right. Um, be it resolved that the Board of Education moves to executive session as per Wisconsin Statute 19.831C for the purpose of considering supervisor compensation. Is there a second? Second. And you need to do the roll call, Mrs. Mayor. Okay. Um, Kate Mayor, I'm here. Tim Menninger. Yes. Lisa Collins. Yes. Gary Dunlap. Yes. Joe Gittins. Yes. Cheryl Hancock. Yes. Anita Jagosinski. Yes. Okay, we will take about a three to five minute break and convene and close.